Welcome to the video lesson on exact values in right triangle trigonometry. In this video, I'm going to show you the two special case triangles, where the values come from, what the ratios are, and then how to use them to find side lengths. So this is the first of the special triangles. It's a right isosceles triangle. So it has a 90 and two 45 degree angles. And because it's isosceles, the two legs, the two non-hypotenuse sides, have the same value. I'll call them both x. And it doesn't matter what value really we put as the hypotenuse because we're going to use this triangle to come up with the ratios. And the ratios would be the same no matter what size the triangle is. But I just put in one for now. And using Pythag, I know that a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And in this case, x squared plus x squared equals 1 squared. I can simplify that a little bit. And if I wanted to isolate x, I would have to divide by 2 and then take the square root. And this is the correct answer, it's just not written in the correct way, because I can't have a radical in the denominator. So I would have to rationalize this, which means multiply the top and the bottom by root 2. And if you want to pause and check your notes on that, you can. And that works out to be root 2 over 2. So both of these are root 2 over 2. And now that I know that, I can come up with all of the trig ratios, because sine of 45 is equal to the hypotenuse, um, sorry, the opposite divided by the hypotenuse. And cosine of 45 is the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse. And tan of 45 is the opposite divided by the adjacent. So whatever those numbers were, if this had been five times as much, both of these would have been five times as much, and the ratios would be the same. But now how do we use those, and how do they let us find exact values? Well, in an example, in a triangle that has a right angle and a 45-degree angle, if you're given one of the side lengths and asked to find any others, I would set up the two ratios exactly as we normally would. So here, if I was looking for, let's say, x, I would figure out that the relevant sides with respect to the 45 are the adjacent and the hypotenuse, and that's cosine. So I'd write out cos 45 is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse. The only difference if I'm asked to find an exact value, is that instead of plugging in cos 45 in my calculator, I'll replace cos 45 with the exact value that I know it has, root 2 over 2. So these things here would be something that you would have in a memory aid, something that you would make reference to or refer to, and use those exact values for any example having to do with a 90, 45, 45 triangle. So when I replace that cos 45, cos 45 is root 2 over 2. And if I wanted to solve for x, I would cross multiply now and then isolate for x. I'll have to do a little bit of radical algebra, so you might want to check your notes on that. But in this case, the two coefficients would simplify and the two radical terms would simplify. So this works out to be 3 root 5 over 2. That's my exact value, the exact same thing. So I haven't given it as an approximate. Uh, it's not written with decimals. I've kept the exact value. And if I want to find why, I would do the exact same thing. If you want to pause and try that one on your own, this is a good time. But using that 45, that y is opposite, and the 3 root 10 over 4 is adjacent. So that means that I'd be using 10. The exact value of 10 is 1. If you want to try this on your own at this point, you can pause and give it a try. I'm going to show the answer now. It's pretty quick because when I cross multiply, I just get that y is exactly equal. I could have also just said that because this is an isosceles triangle, that these two have to be equal. So those are the exact values. The derivation in a 30, 60, 90 triangle is a little bit different. What we had said in class was that if you doubled this triangle, it would be an equilateral triangle, a 60, 60, and this. 2 times 30 is a 60 as well, so all the sides would be the same. That'd be 1, and that would be 1. And then if I looked at half of it again, this would be half of that 1. It would be 0.5. And again, using Pythag, I can figure out that missing value. I would square everything and move this 0 0.25, because 0 0.5 squared is 0.25 to the other side. 1 minus 0 0.25 is 0 0.75. I wrote it as a fraction. When I take the square root, that means root 3 over root 4, which is 2. And that means that this value here is root 3 over 2. And again, 
I can write out all of the trig ratios. You can pause and verify them if you like to make sure that they make sense. But just taking this one as an example, cos of 30 is the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse, which is root 3 over 2. And using those values works exactly the same way. Let's say I wanted to find u here. I know opposite my 30, and I'm looking for the hypotenuse. So opposite and hypotenuse is O, that's so, and that's sine. I'd replace sine 30 with the 1 half. And if you want to pause it and give it a try, you can, but I'll just skip to the answer. So that's the exact value for U. And using V, I would do the same thing. If you want to pause and give it a try on your own, you can. But V is the adjacent. And root 5 over 3 is the opposite. So that's going to be tan. Again, if you want to pause and give it a try, now is a good time. Tan 30 is root 3 over 3. When I cross multiply and isolate, this is what I get. And although this is the correct answer, I can't leave it like that. I have to rationalize my answer, which means multiplying the top and the bottom by root 3. So this is what I get. That's my final answer. And finally, if I looked at another triangle, really this means the same thing because sine, cos, and tan of 60 are in the same triangle as when I was looking from the point of view of 30. It's just which one is opposite and which one is adjacent switches. But if you want to look for A, in this case, using a 60, my A is opposite. And this 2 root 7 over 5 is the hypotenuse. So I would use sine. Sine of 60 is root 3 over 2. If you want to pause and give whole math a try, you can. I, I'll get 2A on one side. And on the other, I get 2 root 7 over 5 times root 3. And the rules that I multiply together, the two radicals, and when I divide by two, this is my answer. And if you want to pause and give B a try, now is a good time, but I'll just skip through the answer. This is what you get. And uh, those are examples of using and finding exact values in right triangle trigonometry. Thanks for watching.